Hello pilots and welcome back to another X-Wing flight video brought to you by Altavark Gaming. As always, my name is Phil and today, I'm sorry, Flight Academy is over for the season, but we have something fun today. We have the Siege of Coruscant scenario for you and joining me to talk through this, we have... Hey guys, it's Andy. Hey Andy, welcome back. Siege of Coruscant. I don't know if you've had a chance to play this yet, have you? I haven't. I don't know anything about it. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, how this uh, works out. Well, it is really good fun. Um, I can tell you that I actually is myself playing this one. But let's have a quick run through those lists and then we will talk about what is happening. So Ben is running the Separatist and he actually gets 25 points. Uh, the first ship he has is the Invisible Hand, which is the big scenario mark in the middle, and we'll come on to that a little bit later. But he does have Count Dooku in the Sith Infiltrator with Malice, Roiling Anger, and the Scimitar title. He has two Flak Arfok prototypes. For the rest of this, I'm just going to call them Tri Fighters because that's so much easier. Both with Afterburners, Contingency Protocol, and the Invasion Sequence 7. He's got DFS 311 in the Vulture with Discord Missiles, Contingency Protocol and Strut Lock Override. The Hauer Chol Prototype with Ion Missiles, Contingency Protocol and Strut Lock Override. And two Bactoid Prototypes with hunt Homing Missiles, not Hunting Missiles, Homing Missiles, Contingency Protocol and Strut Lock Override. And these are all the standard build cards from the Siege of Coruscant pack. Take a big breath when you go through it, Andy. There's a lot on the other side. <laughs> I was just looking at three arcs on the table. That's 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 nice to see. It was so, beautiful. starting with arcs, we've got Oddball, who has Selfless, Veteran Tail Gunner, and R4P Astromech. Then, going down the list, we've got Contrail with the Iron Limiter Overdrive, Precise Astromech, Iron Bonds, and the Alpha 3B. Um, Mesh. Besh. I don't know what that does, that's why it confused me. I'll, I'll have a look at that in a second. And then um, we've got Wolf back in the arc with Wolf Pack, Veteran's Hell Gunner, Q7 Astromech, Shack T with Markmanship, Brilliant Evasion, Ancillary Iron Weapons, R4P Astromech, and then another arc, Jag with Veteran Tail Gunner, R4P Astromech, and Synchronized Constral. Nice. And we have two ships that are. Fading away at the moment. Yes, uh, Anakin and Obi Wan. Um, so Anakin, Malice, R two D two, and again the Iron Weapons, and Obi Wan with Patience R four, P one seven, and the Iron Weapons as well. Yes. So the way this scenario works for those who haven't played it. Um, the Separatists have 25 points to play with. The Republic get a 20-point list, plus two additional ships that are held in reserve with no points limit. So this ship actually works out at 20. This list works out at 28 points. Now those two reserve ships can come in from turn three, but they have to both come in at the same time. So they can't do anything at the moment. But they will come in later. With the Separatists, they get some fun rules as well. If any of their ships go down, they could actually regenerate after the second turn. They get placed anywhere on the board outside of range three of an opponent's ship. So, although the Separatist ships look a bit squishy, they're going to come back, which is very frustrating. Now, we have the Invisible Hand token in the middle as well. That has 15 shields that the Republic are going to try and strip down so that they can land some Jedi on there to rescue Chancellor Palpatine. Although, if they'd read a little bit further in the script, they probably wouldn't want to rescue him. Um, <laughs> with the Invisible Hand, every time it's shot at, it does get a free evade. And at the end of the turn, as long as it is... It has a shield, it regenerates one shield. Now the free evade disappears if you do manage to land an ion on there, which is why you'll notice all the Jedis have ion. Ah. Uh -huh. um, the way the, the Republic will win is by actually rescuing Chancellor Palpatine, and to do that they need to get a Jedi onto the Invisible Hand token 
and they will do the um, rescue action. I believe it's rescue action. Well, they do the action to try and rescue the Chancellor. They gain a disarm, so they've essentially got out of their ship. And if there's one Jedi on there, they'll roll three red dice at the end of the turn. If they score a crit, then they've rescued the Chancellor. If they manage to land two Jedi on there, and they're both on there at the end of the turn, they automatically rescue the Chancellor. So, quite clear win conditions. For the Separatists, their win condition is to either last 12 turns or kill all the Jedi. If they kill the Jedi, then they can't rescue the Chancellor, so... Um, For sure. It's, it's going to be a tricky one for the Republic, because the Jedi ships can be squishy. They are very much glass cannons. They do have a lot of evades, but there's a lot of fire coming in at them. So it's yeah, going to be interesting how it goes. There's, there's a lot of ships on the board, isn't there? So, yeah, it be, being, um, you know, trying to trying to be evasive and dodge some arcs um, doesn't always work when, <laughs> when there's so many uh, guns coming down on you, does it? Yeah, it's absolutely crazy how many ships you've got on the board. Like, you, It's strange to think that you just add, like, a couple more points and that really opens up what you can do. And especially with these um, standard loadout cards, the... Separatist side, other than Count Dooku, they're all under four points. I mean, you've got two four-pointers, three three-pointers, and a two-pointer on there. Dooku is six points, as you could imagine. So, they don't cost a lot, and you get obviously all the upgrades straight away on there. But it was just really good fun to... I mean, personally, it was really good fun to get three arcs on the board, because I love the arc 170, and seeing three of them just flying down was absolutely brilliant fun. But yeah, they're, we, they're great ships, and yeah, seeing them all on the board together, they they look they look even better. Yeah, and obviously it's quite a nice scenario to play as well. It's a little bit different from your standard scenario to get the standard games. Still yet to play Battle of Yavin. We'll need to do that at some point. I believe you get like thirty points worth of ships, which is insane. Um, but just checking if we have any shots in the first turn, and it looks like we do have some shots about to go through. Oh, oh, that's not too bad. But plenty of evades there, so ignoring that one. So we've obviously run through the objectives and what you can do in the scenario pretty quickly there. Now, having gone through that, knowing that the objective is to get those shields off the invisible hand and actually land a Jedi on there whilst having to contend with all the other ships. I'm going to throw you into the deep end here. What would be your plan? Uh, I think you've, I think you've just got to, I think you just got to go, you just got to go for it with this invisible hand, take the focus on it completely because um, with the Separatists being able to regen, uh, I don't know, it feels, it feels like you know you're gonna be up against an unstoppable force so although it's helpful whittling them down if they're just gonna come back again um yeah, yeah. but i guess we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see what what you do i see you've and did the invisible hand um did it regen a shield or did not lose any because i noticed it um i think it must have regen the shield there so it oh cool go, okay if it's only taken one it will go back up to its maximum shields yeah, oh it's... i see okay it is a tough one. Obviously, you want to get those shields down before you really commit your Jedi to that objective because they can't land on it if the shields are up. But at the same time, you've got ships shooting at you and it's so weird to be like, I'm going to ignore that ship that's right in front of me at range one that I could probably wipe off the board because then you're thinking, well, next turn, it's just going to come back and in a potentially more favourable position as well. I mean, you think you just go, right, well, I'm going to put it outside of range three of all their ships. Okay, I point straight at it, I do a four forward, and then I shoot it in the butt. So it's a really tough one to try and work that. But yeah, the invisible hand, especially with having a free evade every time it gets shot at, and that's not the first shot. That's every time you shoot at it, it gets a free evade. So you've essentially got to try and actually 
whittle that. You've got to really focus fire on it and whittle it down or ionize it so it loses the evade. Hmm. But I mean, I've got some good ships to actually do some damage. Three arcs, and their abilities are absolutely brilliant when they pair off with each other. Um, so it's going to be nice to see how they go. Yeah, and um, I played a few standard games actually um, against a list with the arcs, and um, all of these standard ships have that um what do they call it dead to rights is it or something uh born for this born 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 for this where you can um like you if you fly in formation you can borrow focuses and evades and oh it's 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 <laughs> it's tough to uh, it's tough to take them down because you think usually the arc's just got the one one green dice right but in those situations they can be quite tanky yeah, so with, with Born for this, all of the non-Jedi have that. So if there's another ship at range, and you've got the list up, so I believe it's zero to two, Definitely. they can um, spend someone else's focus. That ship will then take a strain. So it's not just a passing it off nice and easy. There is, there is a consequence to it, but it is still really helpful. And then you've got Oddball, who has Selfless anyway, so he could just take the hit for someone, which is quite nice. And again, the arcs work really well with, with like trying to generate target locks for each other. So that is going to be quite handy, because really wanted to try and focus fire down on the Invisible Hand. You want to make sure you've got as many mods as you possibly can. Yeah, so the, the wording on the card is... While another friendly ship at range zero to two defends, if you are not strained, you may spend your focus and evade tokens as if that ship has them. If it does, you gain one strain token. Nice. So, as you said, you could be careful with the strains, but I suppose depending, you know, if 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 I guess if if, if the other ship has been targeted and then you help out and then you take a strain, it's gonna perhaps split up the fire, which is helpful as well. Yeah, because focus firing down arcs is not... Well, they've got a lot of health. I mean, Wolf and Jag have 9 health, Oddball has 10. So it's still a lot of health to strip down, but if you can get even three of these ships to focus fire down on them, it's still only one of eight dice. So it's not the most difficult of things to do, and especially if you start getting Dooku, into the fray as well because Dooku's ability is still it's exactly the same so he's he can still basically call a result um and then he's got malice and he's also got roiling anger which is a, a new upgrade specific for this card at the start of the engagement phase if you're in an enemy ship's forward arc you may gain one strain token to recover one force so if you happen to have spent a force already you can gain that back and it's that's basically turns Dooku's ability on. Oh, that's good synergy. Yeah. It's just... I mean, it is a bit nasty. A um, couple of things I will mention. Um, we did put the wrong Dooku card on, so he was actually activating his, what would be his normal initiative without the standard. We did realise a little bit later, but we're like, you know what, it's fine. This is just a bit of fun and casual one. And there are a few points where I... Can, completely missed my system phase step because I'm not used to running things with a system phase step anymore. Everything I do normally does it after it's moved, so Ben was very gracious in allowing me to actually do that. Oh, I remember um, not systems phase because it was version 1 and we didn't have a systems phase, but back in the old uh, Dash Po list, if anyone's familiar with that, uh, you had Ray, which was um, if you don't if you don't spend a focus, you can like put it on the card at the end of the turn or something, and then at the start of the next engagement phase or whatever trigger it was, you can then take one focus off the card to put it back on the ship, which was incredibly powerful because you'd build up a battery. But I remember going to a tournament and I had a permanent marker and I just wrote Ray on my left hand just to make sure I wouldn't forget because uh, it is easy to, to to miss those triggers. But as you say, in a in a uh, casual game like this. Uh, you know, in the store, I'm sure people don't mind it if we do things slightly out of order. Yeah, and I remember those days of having to actually write 
write stuff down in your hand. And it's weird because we have more triggers now, but I find there's less times you actually write stuff on your hand for that. But I think if ever I'm running system face stuff again, I might just have to write system on my hand so that I see it when I'm putting the dials down. Because, <laughs> I, again, I very rarely run, unless I'm running bombs and I instinctively know, right, bombs always in the system phase. But it's like when it comes to doing any movement in the system phase, I'm always so, I don't often fly Etas. I tend to fly Delta 7s and that's after they've fully executed. So just getting my head around having it the other way around is a bit tricky. But it looks like we're about to come up to our next set of shooting. And what Ben's just doing there with the prototypes is just checking, because if they have a ship in their bullseye at the start of the engage phase, they actually get a calculate token, which is really nice. And also um, DFS311, who is our yellow um, vulture droid there, can transfer one of his calculate tokens to another friendly ship at range 0 to 3. So a lot of synergy in there, as well as those network calculations. So... Lots of token sharing. Yeah, there's there's lots of token sharing, lots to remember with these lists. And it's a good job they're all on one card for each ship, because otherwise it'll be a very messy table. And, and that's another lot. thing that's... Uh... That's another thing that's quite nice about these standard loadout cards is they just, yeah, as you say, take, they don't take up any space on the table. So in terms of set up and pack down, pack, you know, pack away, it uh, doesn't take long at all, does it? Absolutely. And to be honest, the first time I'd actually properly saw the cards was when we flew this. Um, ben was Ben actually has the Siege of Coruscant pack. For some reason, I still haven't bought it. I don't know why. I keep meaning to buy that and the Battle of Yevon. I just haven't got round to it yet. Um, so it was the first time I'd really got a chance to properly read the cards. And this is our first stack. I believe this is Contrail on to the Invisible Hand. So I do have that focus to spend if I want. And I'm just going for violence because, again, 15 shields is a lot to strip down. Yeah, that's going to take some doing, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's not going to be a couple of shots. And it doesn't matter if you get hits or crits. It's still just shields going down. So you can't just get a uh, structural damage on the invisible hand and suddenly it doesn't get that free of aid, only <laughs> with ions. But um, yeah, it's going, to be, it's going to be a challenge to strip those shields down. And then once they're down, the Jedi can hopefully have some fun there and I can then start taking out some of the other ships and trying to make it a little clearer route for them. And uh, how, how that um, token then that you have to land on, on, on the board, the invisible hand, so it looks like it, it looks like it may like three ship bases by four, maybe, so. Yeah, I think it is about that. I think it's didn't actually measure it actually to be honest i just sort of looked at it and went right i've got to land on it but yeah it looks like it is about three by four on the ship bases um so it's still a, a decent area to be able to actually land on so it's not completely out of the realms of possibility um if it was a smaller token i mean to be honest i'm really good at landing on obstacles as it is so something that big shouldn't be too difficult um, <laughs> But yeah, it's got a nice area, but what you've got to remember is what you have to actually complete the action, complete your maneuver on there. So you need to fully execute because you have to use an action. It's not, it's like a regular scenario action. It's not something you can link to or coordinate. So you actually have to land on there like spot on to get it. So oh. that is going to make it a little bit trickier, especially if you've got all these darn droids just hanging around and taking up space. Now oh, those droids as well, because they've got the um, Brutlock, they actually can't park themselves on um, an obstacle, so at the start of the activation you may spend one charge if you do ignore obstacles while you move through them this round. So they can move through them, but they can't land on them, so you can't just set them up like a little turret 
around the invisible hand, play like a castle. Oh, uh, okay. Them, which is actually quite handy because just imagine those three obstacles in front of the invisible hand just having hyenas and <laughs> um, vultures parked on them, just firing off discords and homing missiles. I would not want to come up against that. It's quite it's quite a cheeky ability that in the in the standard game actually, and then having the ability to rotate ninety as well. It's um, it does, as you say, turn him into a bit of a sort of turret, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to hope that you make your opponent second guess your move, and then you just go around the other side of them. But I mean, we don't see them very often anymore, to be honest. Vultures they're coming back a little bit, but. I mean, the vultures and hyenas are the only ones in the, in the game that can do that, and again, they don't have any shields, so they're not too difficult to take out. Uh, but this looks like more attacks going into the invisible hand, uh, and that is that was Wolfpack using Jag's target lock, and then Jag regaining that target lock. Shenanigans. Absolute shenanigans. Another shield down. So as long as I can keep that going, the Invisible Hand is slowly, slowly losing shields and won't go back up to 15 unless I have a pretty bad turn later. <laughs> but arcs, they're just, they're so much fun. And you can as well, if you get it just right. That base is large enough. If you manage to get your arc just right, you can uh, Veteran Tail Gunner with it as well. So you could do a forward and a rear attack on it. It's not easy. It's not easy to pull off, but you can pull it off. You mean you mean onto the iron hand or just in general? On, onto the invisible hand. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, invisible hand. Iron hand. I was thinking. I don't know. Game of Thrones <laughs> in my head or something there. Um, oh, that would be that would be a cheeky maneuver actually. Yeah, the only other ship in the game you could manage that on in this one is Dooku because. The medium base is too big to do that on a small ship, but again, if any of those droids do end up behind um, an arc, then double tapping is always going to be really nice. I do like Veteran Tail Cutter, it's a really good upgrade, especially on ships like the Ark. Um, the Slave One is a good place for that one as well. And uh, word, wording on the card, if you're not familiar, it's pretty. Um... Pretty straightforward, but Veteran Tail Gunner is after you perform a primary front arc attack, you may perform a bonus rear arc. Oh, re bonus primary rear arc attack. God, I said it's simple and I messed it up. But yeah, shoot out the front, shoot out the back. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good ability. It's the basically the static variant of Veteran Turret Gunner. So, because you can only do it forward and back, whereas Turret Gunner is, you can obviously rotate that turret. But I don't think I don't think we see enough arcs in the game. But with these standard loadout cards, I think we well we've seen more arcs in store actually recently because of the standard loadout. So I was actually looking at some rebel arcs the other day, but they don't their loadouts don't seem quite spicy enough. No, they don't seem to be on the same par, do they? Um, you get a lot of value out of these uh, standard loadout arcs yeah. here. For, each of them are. Um, four, well, they're four points each, so... I mean, that's ridiculous. A medium base ship with, like, forward and back arc and their abilities for four points is so good. I mean, again, you can't customise them and their Born for this ability is only handy if you have another ship with it, but it is still really cool. And plus, and that... who, who doesn't love arcs on the table? They, they're just... They just look right. Yeah, they look good. It looks like the hyenas are now having their fun. Homing missiles as well, that's just so rude. And in fact, that was a homing missile from Red on to On Trail there. And I just decided I'll take a damage rather than taking... Well, it did it twice. I thought I'd take a damage instead of taking four dice shots at me. Oh. So I'm going to have to regret that because I'm about down to half now. Do I trigger Born for this? Got nothing else to... 
Yeah. There we go. Just double checking that um, they do all have Born for this again. Myself and Ben, it's the first time we've actually played this scenario. So, a lot of rechecking the cards, what they do, because again, it's nice to have them all on the card there. But I did find that I was kind of missed having them, the cards separate as well at the same time in a weird way, because then you, when you set them all up, you obviously put all the cards down, it gives you that jolt to remind you what they have got. But for clarity's sake, it's nice to have them all on one card. It just makes the table so much easier to manage. Yeah, I know what you mean about having them separate. It's, um, and of course, the ones you know, you just you visually know what they are, so you can just you don't need to need even to look at it, do you? But actually, on the standard loadout cards, they are the, the layout is nice, but they are quite busy. So actually, when you look down at it, you're looking through all the upgrades, trying to find the one you 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 want, and it's just take a bit of time, but. Especially if there's like the those sort of like unique upgrades that are only on the standard loadouts, like the ancillary ion weapons. I think I must have read that three or four times to figure out exactly how it worked. And again, on the separatist side, you've got roiling anger, contingency protocol, evasion sequence seven, strut lock override. They're not ones that are in normal play, and I'm curious as to whether we will see any of them come out as a regular upgrade. I don't think we will. But it would be, because some of them I look at, especially for the Battle of Yavin, I'm like, oh, I'd love to have that specific upgrade as an option for other ships. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head which ones they were, but I swear I saw some, I was just like, that's really cool. I want that as a normal upgrade card, but I just don't think, I don't think that's the direction that Atomic Mass is going to go, unfortunately. I think, especially with the new starter kits, um, standard loadouts are going to be become more prevalent yeah I, I think so and when you look at the value you get on the standard loadouts particularly now we've had the, the points change um, you do it you do feel like you're getting a bit more bang for your buck um, if you if you were to build it if you were to build a similar you know loadout um without without the standard loadout card i think you wouldn't quite get as much on there true there is that i mean boy vader is probably the one to be looking at there because he is absolutely brutal and is cheaper than normal vader so but again the, having the ability to still be able to have your your own variant of that ship works because then you could actually tailor your squad um, if you're stuck with only using the standard loadouts, although they have abilities that will work with each other, it's it becomes more of a known variable. Everyone knows that Boy Vader is going to hit like a truck. Um, everyone knows that if they see a couple of Siege of Coruscants that they're going to have Born for this. So there's things that they can do to counteract that. Whereas if you turn up and go, right, I've got Vader and he's got this, this and this, your opponents are going to go, right, now how do I deal with that? So advantages and disadvantages in both senses there. But Jag is going aggressive in there. And I'll tell you what, on a yeah. camera sense, I'm really glad that Ben put the invisible hand down this side of the table and not up the other side so we can see it a lot clearer. <laughs> that's not that's not the worst place to bump really. No, and uh, oh, although that's meant, not quite as I meant to system phase with her. Let's see if Shakti it... doesn't take a damage. Oh, thank so. The, thank the, the, fourth. the systems phase we're looking at there is the intuitive controls, which is during the systems phase, you may perform a purple barrel roll or a purple boost action. Which, um, as you said, if you had done, you might have been able to. Um, yeah, that, that would have been quite handy for me, actually, there. But, you know what, that's also a nice block on that Tri-Fighter. I don't think Ben expected me to turn in. I think he's expecting me to come round the back. But from this turn, now, any of those Separatist ships that do go down will be able to come back. So Ben now basically has infinite points on the board. <laughs> 
fact, I might keep a note. Any ships that go down to figure out exactly how many points he ended up having. Because if you think if a ship goes down and comes back, you're essentially doubling its points value there. So. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's one of the down. Again, you look at the different ships that they have. Obviously, Ben ships, they're low on hull, they don't have shields, um, so they can pop quite quickly. Whereas I've got a lot of hull, a lot of shields, Jedi with force, and lots of evades. So the durability is with myself there. And I was speaking to a couple other players in store on the night who'd done Siege of Coruscant, and they did say it felt like it was more tailored towards um, separatists than it was for the Republic. And I can see where they're coming from. Being able to respawn and the only win condition for the Republic is to make sure that your Jedi land on there. It does It does give a lot more peril for the Republic. Certainly. It, it, it feels like it feels like it's the Republic player that, ha that has to take the risks. Yeah. You know, Separatists can rel play relatively safe, can't you? You know your ships are going to respawn. <laughs> so... You just hope that they get some shots off first. I mean, if you look at it as well, um, you've got the three I-5s and the rest are I-1s. So if they do go down, that is obviously ship that's guns that they can't get on target. So... I mean... Four out of seven, so over fifty percent of Ben's list, I can initiative kill. So I do have a distinct advantage in that sense as well. That's a good point, actually, because you could, as you say, some of them are quite squishy. So you could potentially keep them from shooting by keep wiping them off the board. But equally, if you did that, you wouldn't be getting much damage into the invisible hand. So I guess it's the the balance of the two. It's almost the timing of when you take them out. I think, for me, if you take them out too early and they can respawn and get into a favourable position, and that's a lot of tokens on the board, um, <laughs> it, can make it, it can make it quite difficult. But if you manage to soften them up and then take them out just the right time, that could be something that can really help with the Republic. Sure. Because, like, uh, DFS311, is that how you say it? 311? Yes. 311. He's ironed, and he's definitely not facing the right direction, so you're probably no. better off just ignoring him for a few rounds, right? Yeah, in fact, I mean, both of the vultures are ironed, so, I mean, the prototype obviously can bank in, so it's not too bad for them but 311 is definitely facing the wrong way so that's quite nice uh, I did catch oddball there because it is a bit of a uh, a bit of a traffic jam right in the middle of there those um, painters decided to definitely go a bit too slow for my liking there oh and that's a lot of damage going in there Interestingly, Ben not really... I know I've only got one Jedi on the board, but the moment Ben is obviously trying to go for the arcs, looking at the damage output of them, and I, I think that's the right choice there as well. Yeah, particularly with... Um, and I don't know if Ben's thought about this as well, but how you mentioned earlier with that veteran arc... Um, veteran tail gunner, sorry, with the double arc. If you pull that off, that's super efficient, isn't it? I mean, on, onto the invisible hand, so... If he can take oh. you out before he gets there, then he's going to mitigate that. Yeah, the Republic have their first casualty of the night. Contrail has gone down. Luckily, it's at the initiative five steps, so I still get to shoot. Um, something we weren't 100% sure on either with the way that um, the Invisible Hand works as to whether, with Contrail being on the Invisible Hand, does he count at range zero? And I think we did eventually just go to say, yeah, it's range zero, so you can't modify if you're on it. But um, we weren't 100% sure. So if anyone is actually familiar with the Siege of Coruscant or knows the answer, drop that in the comments, because that could be quite an interesting thing to know. 
to be honest. That would make a big difference, wouldn't it? Yeah. Two, two shots at range one, or two shots at range zero. From the arc, so I mean. If, yeah, if you part of the arc right on it, then you've got a forward and back. I mean, that's great anyway, but it's always good to know as well. So I'm not entirely sure if that's Contrail or Oddball that's taking the shot there, but that is another shield off the Invisible Hand, so getting there. Um, but that's my V-Wing down, which is a shame. I do like flying the V-Wings, they're good fun. Shielded TIE Fighters, essentially. I've never I've never used them, but they, um, they do look interesting. Um, nice looking dial. I mean, I've got three of them now, and I keep meaning to try and run a list with three of them in. Oh, that's a nice big hit there on the Invisible Hand from Oddball, and he is going for his Veteran Tail Cutter as well, which is also oh, nice. range one. Um, oh, that's a great shot. Oh, and it has softened up the prototype nicely, so leave it alone now. Like... Bill, leave it alone. You don't okay. take it out. But yeah, this is, is like I said, it's a really good fun scenario. It's, it's nice to play a different format than the usual four scenarios. Um, playing something from the movies, like in my head, all I've got thinking through is just that opening scene from Revenge of the Sith with Obi Wan and Anakin just flying in and they could have come in this round but I've held them off um, for this turn but with so many shields still on the invisible hand I wanted to try and weaken it down further before I actually committed those Jedi in because otherwise it just makes them a target to be shot at before they get there that makes sense and there's a lot of action in that small space of the board isn't there so um, you're not going to want to fly them in and then just bump and be vulnerable so no. Just, holding them back is probably sensible. And knowing how damaging Dooku can actually be as well, because he's he's in a nice position just to turn around and then go straight for Anakin and Obi Wan. And again, we've we've seen it before with Eta Twos. They are they're really good. And they can be really difficult to hit, but once that damage starts going through, they just pop so easily. Oh, another max shot there onto the invisible hand, down to six shields. Wow. I don't know how many shields it's taken this uh, turn, but I'm sure we were in double numbers at the start of round three. We, were, we had 12 at the beginning of the turn, so it's taken six damage this round, and that's from two shots. So that was two range one shots that actually got that down. They all got four hits. With the invisible hand getting its free evade, that's three hits per shot. Absolutely brilliant there. So that is doing as best as possible and it's at this point that we realise that Duke uh, had the wrong card um, we decided not to roll back any of um, the shooting that we had done we just let Duke shoot at this point um, by this point we'd had quite a few ships shoot so it was just too much to try and roll it back so I thought for a minute maybe that was a new ability on one of the standard loadout cards that's uh, <laughs> spend one charge and you can change to another pilot or something. <laughs> spend, spend one charge and change your initiative. It's almost change. like a, the uh, adaptability card that you had in version 1 where you could have it either way to go up or down an initiative. Or oh, a yeah. pilot skill as it was back in the day. Oh, two crits going through... So, using Bourne for this, because I don't want to oh, take the sure. Absolutely. on to Wolf there. And uh, I did keep trying to put the strain on the wrong ship, but I did get it right eventually. And more shots going into the Invisible had Another range one shot with the target lock in there. Oh. No focus, because I've just spent it, but that's three, so that's Two more shields going down, down to four shields. This is the time for the Republic to save the day. It is going down quickly because last round I thought, I thought, wow, you got a way to go with this, but actually, start, now, you, now you're getting closer. It's starting to, starting to drop. 
Yeah, once oh, that's you a good get... counter attack. Oh, that is that is strong. That's a crit onto Wolf. Yeah, once you get close to the invisible hand, that's where it works because it still gets its range three bonus, so it still gets a free evade and an evade dice. So yeah, it's it's a lot to take down. Um, oh, an oddball actually took the on its shields there was selfless so that wolf did not have the trick go through oh that's nicely done selfless that's a cheeky card selfless yeah. is when another friendly ship at range zero to one defends before the neutralized result step if you are in the attack arc you may suffer one crit damage to cancel one crit result but it can be very handy just seeing if 311 has a shot. Uh, I knocked it and went, well, he does now. <laughs> not, not that it mattered. Two blanks. That's, that's a perfect example of good karma, though, isn't it? You've, you've knocked it and said, oh, okay, well, well, we'll give you the shot. But then actually the shot the shot is missed yeah. anyway, so. <laughs> I mean, me and Ben have played enough games with each other now that we know that either way, we're going to call it as fair as possible. And if we make a little mistake like that, we just literally laugh it off. But... Anakin and Obi-Wan have joined the fray now, so let's see if we can get those final five shields down on the invisible hand and see if either of those two can actually land on there. And then basically we'll skip to the opening of Revenge of the Sith, and then it'll be all good, <laughs> and the Republic will win, and I'll celebrate. Um, but for copyright reasons, we won't actually do that. <laughs> um, but it's going to be interesting now we've got two more ships as well just to cause some chaos for those separatists they've either got to I think right continuing on the arcs or do we now go for those Jedi so it, it it's nice when they come in because it then makes the separatist player think right now I've got a little bit more to go and here's me forgetting the system phase I was wondering, actually, if you were going to system phase with the Jedi. Yeah, and I've just realised a mistake I made there. I thought that stress token was on Shakti when it's on Wolf, so I could have done that system phase move. And uh... bearing in mind I played this game, have overlaid this game, it's only now that I've, I've noticed that. <laughs> but that's fine. These Again, these things happen. Um... I mean, we know that when we play a game, nothing is ever perfect when we play. Um, we're always learning every single time we play a game. And if you can't learn from it and have fun, then something's slightly wrong there. But fun is the aim of the game. Absolutely. And, and that's why I guess it's nice you've got these uh, additional scenarios, isn't it? Just to mix things up a little bit. Yeah, because I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the normal scenarios. They are really good fun. I like the way it gives. I mean, I love a dogfight as well, as we know from Flight Academy, but having these scenarios as well just gives you that little bit of extra, like, risk and reward sort of thing to it. it it's quite nice. But then being able to recreate the movies is really cool. I mean, we did last year our own version of the Battle of Yavin, and we actually did it in a three stage scenario. So it was quite nice that Atomic Mass actually eventually brought out a Battle of Yavin pack. We've obviously got Siege of Coruscant. I believe we've got Battle of Endor is the next one that is coming out. I don't know when, but it'll be interesting to see what we get with that. And I'm curious to see what other scenarios we might get. Will there be an Escape from Hoth? Will there be Starkiller Base? Will there be um, the Battle of Exegol? Um, I'd love to see, actually, the Phantom Menace one thrown in there as well, because I've got a couple of their one Starfighters, and I'm pretty sure that I can borrow some more, and I want to fly loads of them against loads of Vultures, because that could be hilarious. I don't know, um, I don't know what's planned or, or teased or what's next, but I'd like to see some standard loadouts for the Resistance and First Order, so... Um... Yeah. That and would be it, interesting. It, it, lo it looks like that's the way, I know we spoke about that earlier, didn't we? But it looks like that's the way the game's heading in a sense, um, with, with a lot of standard loadout cards, so... Yeah. And as well, there's other things they could do. We, we, 
you look a away from the movies and those other um, options, you've got some of the ship battles in The Mandalorian um, and the other TV shows. There's plenty of that. There's the um, Anakin's Y Wing assault in Clone Wars, could be quite interesting to see um, with them trying to sneak up on the um, Separatists. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what other sort of scenarios they decide to bring into the game, to be honest. But while we're waiting for them to finish up their movement, guys, just want to remind you, if you do like what we're doing here at Out of Art Game, you can actually support us on Patreon. We have the link in the description below. Supporting us on Patreon is a great way of showing us that you actually think what we're doing is good. It allows us to provide you more content, you get access to our Discord, so you can actually chat with us and get insights onto what's coming next, including <laughs> Season 5 of Flight Academy, uh, which is not, <laughs> not a million miles away. We're still in the planning stages, but it is coming. I know we've just finished Season 4, but we're super excited for it. Um, as well, another way you can actually support us, we have actually just launched um, a range of t-shirts online with the link for that is in the description below myself and mrs out of arc have been spending the last week or so getting some designs out there we've got the standard out of arc logo uh, we've got some flight academy shirts which you can actually see on the screen now so again if you want to represent or just show your love you can pick up a shirt that way and you can tell everyone where you got it uh the flight academy ones we're actually really big fans of because they look like you could actually just wear those nice down the beach as well and it just looks like quite a cool sort of like summery x-wing top so but the link for the patreon and the shop for the t-shirts is on the screen below yeah those t-shirts are looking good i, I do like the designs well, I'm I'm uh, I'm torn. <laughs> I'm torn which one I'd go for. I, I I like the rebel one, but then I don't really play rebels that often. So yeah, I mean you've come back in all in on the empire. I mean your double desis. I mean they are cool. Oh yeah, they've, I've had some fun with them, and I'm taking them to Games Expo at the end of this month. Um, so we'll see how we get on with, with with that. But I've been flying them a lot, so I think it'll be semi-retiring them afterwards or at least mixing up a little bit maybe maybe a single desi still to be able to see decimators on the board again i absolutely love it the decimator is one of my favorite ships and i'm i mean yes me and you were both a little bit disappointed that you couldn't fit three in a list but <laughs> i mean a how competitive would that actually be and b it yeah it would have been fun though. Yeah, it would be, it would be fun, but um, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think a decimate will ever be six points. No, uh, you can fit three gauntlets though on the Empire, which is funny. Um, that's an expensive list financially because gauntlet's <laughs> not a cheap ship. Um, it'll be very intimidating on the board. Uh, so that is Wolf down. Wolf Ouch. is down. And that was a pilot skill kill as well, right? So no shooting for Wolf. So yeah, that was initiative four. So he was taken down by Dooku there. So that is unfortunate. Well, Dooku and the Tri Fighters. Oh, that's another great shot from the Tri Fighters. And that Shaq T down as well. She has really struggled. By the way. That stress was not on her. That might have been a completely different game. Um, but that's mm -hmm. fine. I've still got two superior Jedi to come into the fray now. And speaking of them, here is Obi-Wan. Going for a speculative long-range shot with his Etta. I mean, if you've got the shot, why not take it? Yeah, I mean, not great dice with the Etta, unfortunately. Unless you've got the bullseye. But hey, a shot is a shot. I mean, that wasn't a great shot, but it was still a shot. <laughs> it's those kind of shots that usually surprise you, isn't it? Yeah. When you, you when you a bit of damage, you're chucking two red dice against someone that's you know got five greens or something, and you never know. That's when you, when you slip a cheeky crit in or something that changes the game. Yeah. But uh, not on this occasion. No, but here <laughs> is Oddball seeing if he can 
do anything to get rid of those last five shields. No. Uh, so going into 311 instead. Ooh, weakening 311 as well. So let's see, did that barrel give me both arcs? Or just one? Or none? It would appear none. Oh, that's unfortunate. I should have just stayed there. Should have just stayed there. I was wondering if you if you had the had the beans to take the shields off there, but uh with no shots then that's that, that's uh, not gonna happen. No, um, it's an unfortunate position there. Um, I tried to be super sneaky and super clever and uh, outthought myself, really. Um, so no shields off the invisible hand that round, so in fact it goes back up one, which is Ooh. unfortunate, but I'm losing ships to be able to actually do damage. I've got two arcs left. It's a good job I've got Anakin and Obi-Wan to come in as well, otherwise I would not be in a very good <laughs> position right now. I mean, I don't think they were ready to land on it yet anyway, so I guess if if they've both got guns on this round, then possibly next round would be, would yeah. be one to land. And if Anakin can get there early and get his ancillary ion weapons and get ion damage onto the invisible hand, then it loses its invade and makes it just that much easier to trigger that. And with the ancillary ion weapons, you obviously spend two charges and any crits you roll become ions. But obviously any hits will still take shields off because they're just normal mm. hits, so it's it's quite nice. What 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 do you think of that upgrade for standard play? Because when I read it, I wasn't because it's quite inconsistent, isn't it? Unless you unless you've got a way of guaranteeing a crit, and of course you have to spend the charge on 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 it first, so you can't see what you roll and then use it. I mean, I don't, I don't dislike it. I what I like about it is the fact that it's not a case of it ignores everything else and it's only crits do anything so you have to roll crits and then you'll score ions you still roll a hit or a focus you can still uh, like change that i i actually kind of like it i think it's almost like a weirdly it's almost like a more powerful ion weapon that actually allows you to do damage at the same time because that's something i always get a bit feel a bit um Disappointed with ion like cannons and ion cannon turrets. Again, yeah, it's great that you can control potentially control where your opponent is going to go. But how many times have you seen an ion missile hit with all four hits against a single like small base ship, and you've gone, ah, oh, that ship's going to get. Oh, <laughs> if only no, it was damage. Yeah, you're like, if only it was damage. So I kind of like that. And with Anakin, he's got malice, so you can obviously make sure. That you're gonna get a crit in there. You take marksmanship because that's when you perform an attack, not even a primary attack. So, if it was an ability in the game, like outside is... of standard loaders, I I actually think I'd be tempted by it. That is true, actually. I didn't I didn't think about obviously having some modifiers to combine with it that can increase your chance of getting crits. And actually, right, it's because I mean I I remember when. I was playing resistance wirings before they got the uh, point drop a while ago and um, you would be using iron turret on those but not to get the iron on but just <laughs> just for the damage because you'd know you know you'd, if you roll three attack it's dice it's dice, more, yeah. yeah more likely to get some through but I mean the damage was was, was minimal on on those so um, yeah I don't think any yeah. of the iron weapons really do any damage so I guess it's nice to have have an option yeah I mean they're very much ball control um, weapons, which again is really good because it can set you up for the next turn. But you roll four hits on an ion like missile, like or ion torpedo before you've even had to modify. And you're like, where was that on my other ship that has range one, four dies, but I had to boost so I didn't get anything to be able to modify it? And you're like, oh, I when, wish. When you get a roll like that, you know that the green dice you're rolling next are going to be blank outs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's the um, worst bit. 
There was another trigger of a system phase move as well that Ben allowed me to do because I forgot and I didn't have a permanent marker to write system on my hand, um, <laughs> which would have also been really weird when I turned up to work the next day and they go, why have you got system written on your hand? Like, oh, the systems are just really bad at work. Um, but it's that's, a good that's, one, that's one you could get away with. If you wrote a system on your hand, you could you could blag it, but if you if you had to write something like Skywalker or something, oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You'd get an, you'd get an odd look when you turn up to Ag a meeting. Agile gunner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're explaining that one. <laughs> it's a long story. It, oh, it's a long story that would just absolutely snowball, <laughs> and then they just look at you afterwards and go, "Okay, right, let's let's get this meeting on with." Um, but yes, the Jedi are getting into the fray now. It looks like they should be able to get some shots on. Um, all of those Separatists, though, have literally just turned around and gone, yep, yeah, we're also here to play, so... It's a lot of guns pointing towards those uh, arcs. Yeah, it's about this point that I, I'm sort of now thinking this is where you maybe want to start trying to take out some of those smaller ships, or at least considering taking it, like one or two of them out. Yeah, because you're going to need to land... Well, if you take the shields out, I suppose you're going to need to land cleanly on the invisible yeah. hand to, to be able to do the rescue action. So if there's a bunch of uh, cheap ships just sat in the way you, and, you, and, and you bump, or, or overlap as it's called now, you'll, yeah. uh, you won't be able to do the rescue action. So It's definitely going to make it tricky, and that's not ideal. But looks like might be... I think I triggered the ancillary weapons, but... Just debating whether to spend spending the force on Malice there to put them both up to crits. Again, Ben was reminding me that he gets the free evade, so there's almost no point spending that extra force to do that. Again, that's a really nice thing. And if you are playing this, don't forget, at range 3, he gets the automatic evade, and he gets to roll... So sometimes there's always no point like spending all of your mods to do it. I mean, if you've got marksmanship on anything, which was only Shaq T, then do it anyway. But ah, oh, there's the evade, so no ion on the invisible hand. That's unfortunate. Six I think you needed that. Yeah, six shields to get down. I've got the guns to do it if Ben doesn't kill them. That's a good start. That's a great start. Oddball is going to live that one. I don't think... I'm not sure if the other Fly Fighter actually has an arc on Oddball as well. That's not a great roll from Dooku either. Actually looking pretty good for me at the moment. Although I think that Fly Fighter might have arc. One more shield down on the invisible hand there from Oddball, and here is that rear shot to see if we can get rid of 311. Target lock hit crit. Oh. Hey, oh, nice. One down. So he will come back in the planning phase of turn six, at which point he can start outside of range three of the Republic ships. So. But it does mean he's then got to actually come back in. Again, he will come back in with all of his um, upgrades retooled up. So, almost like having a completely fresh new ship in there. <laughs> that is another shield on the invisible hand. It's getting close now. I don't. I won't be able to get them all down this turn, but at least it's a net gain. Well, that's pointing. Oh. Because we deemed it a range zero. I couldn't use the target lock, so... Ah, I see. Please, save that focus for a reason. 
no damage on Oddball from that one. That's good. The arcs are hanging in there despite the guns on. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed with how well... I know I've obviously lost one arc, but I'm really impressed with how well these arcs have actually held on, considering they've only got one evade dice, and there's the potential of a lot of shots coming in at him, or at them even. So it, it's nice that they've managed to tank a lot of that. There's that evade dice just coming in clutch again. Oddball is massively hurting, but there's nothing else that can shoot him, so that is good. And here is 311 coming back, looking like he's oh. going to try and intercept the Jedi. Oh, they come back stressed as well. I forgot about that, to be honest. Okay, that's interesting. So, no coming in at three and then doing like a weird K turn to <laughs> get in around behind. But still going super speedy there. And I think I think Ben's got the right idea there, trying to head off those Jedi and see if he can get some shots on them to weaken them down because they they got a tricky a tricky position to get themselves into. Oh, and here is the prototype bumping, and the prototype takes himself out. <laughs> That's nice. I just imagine in my head, Dooku's just like, you've bumped into my ship, and just like lightsabers the prototype in half. <laughs> like, That's exactly what happened. <laughs> How and dare you. Here's the hyena, repeating the same trick, but clearly Dooku is too busy taking up the vulture to <laughs> realise. Now I just need to hope that Dooku gets out of my way so that it's not going to cause me issues when I come to try and land on it. Yeah, that's a tough, uh, tough spot to land on. With all, the, with all the ships there. It's one of those weird ones where it's actually nice that Ben has initiative because his ships do have to move before mine. So I know that there should hopefully be some space. Lovely K turn there from Jack. If he survives the I-5 step, he's got some nice shots into the invisible hand and see if he can weaken DFS as well. And Oddball, if I remember rightly, used his R4P charge there to reduce the difficulty of that three bank as well. There uh... Clear, clear him some space for the Jedi to come in, potentially. Yeah, and also just try to keep... Get, get those guns on the invisible hand, because the Jedi are getting really close now, and ideally I want... This is the kind of position I'm, I'm hoping... Yeah, great position there for Obi-Wan to be in. Um, get some shots in on the invisible hand, hopefully not take any damage, and then land on it. But again, it's the landing on it that's really tricky. Oh, and now Dooku is bumping. Not unsurprising, to be honest, when there's that many ships in such close formation. And now Dooku takes <laughs> damage from the red backside. I mean, with I that actually... many force, he probably doesn't mind skipping his action and just another turn potentially weighs in the way. I think Ben's actually done more damage to his own ships than I have. <laughs> Mine's all been on the invisible hand at this point. And let's see, is this... Disappeared there for a second. Uh, is that a dice I... off the table, I think? Maybe. I think, to be honest, it's not going to take it out, so it's fine, but we've got one last Tri fighter to come round. But yeah, they are getting their guns right in, ready to capture those Jedi. Oddball is loving this. Suddenly he's not being shot at. Mm. 
Oh, I, it, this could this could still go. This could still go either way. It, it is really throughout the whole game. It never felt like I was out of the running. I mean, I've lost three ships, and in, in a normal game, you're like, I've lost three ships. Oh, here we go. This is going to be really tough. But I always felt like the win condition was was achievable. Mm. Um, obviously, with the Separatists having the two win conditions, one which is outlast the game, which is not an easy feat. I mean, as we've seen, the Invisible Hand has taken a heck of a lot of shield damage. Um, it's a focus, not a reinforce. I was, going, a I was confused for a second there, but okay. Yeah. Um, it's taken a heck of a lot of damage when I've got in close. Um, yeah. So it's easy to do that, but taking the Jedi out is the easier path to victory for the Separatists. Absolutely, Which yeah. Weird to say. Free, free hull on each of them. They can, as you said earlier, the, uh, the Etters, they can... They can just go poof. <laughs> I'm just looking at you've got at least five shots potential into the Jedi there. I think red might be just out of art, but you've got you've got a lot of shots that can come in. Here's Anakin going for it. So spending a force to guarantee one going through, saving that focus for defense just in case and I also have the issue so it'll be my five so this is this is the time to get those shields down once they're down they don't regenerate so and as well to note you need to take the shields down before you land on it so you can't get on there take the shields down and then think oh I'll try and do the action because it's in your perform action step so the shields need to be down before you land on this. So, and if oddball... and completing the action doesn't, so you do the rescue action, then you say you have to roll. So you do the rescue action, and you get a disarm token. Then at the end of the at the end phase, you roll. If you have one of them, you roll three red dice. And if you score a crit, you have rescued the chancellor, and the game is over. Oh crikey! So even even landing on there and performing that action doesn't guarantee your. The only way to base, if you land on there with two of them, I could do the action with both of them, and keep them both alive to the end phase. You automatically win. You don't have to roll if you get okay. two Jedi. On. So it's shields down though. Shields mm -hmm. are down on the invisible hand, so this the attack run can commence. But yeah, so. You've then got to weather the entire storm with your Jedi there, knowing that your Jedi is not going to be able to shoot as well. So, yeah, you don't, that... have, you don't have focus or evade either because you've had to take, you had to do the rescue action, which gives you a disarm. So you're relying on your force. So there's a lot, there's a lot to take into account. Ouch, that's a big shot, and that is into Obi-Wan, I believe. Yep, that's into Obi-Wan. That is a hit. Two, Two crits. crits. Oh, please no wow. direct damage. So, the first one is a damaged engine, and the second one is a hull breach. Oh, that's not good. That is, that is not good at all, and he's still got a lot of shots to come in at him. And he survived. having to spend another force hanging in there well the thing is he wants as many they want as many forces as they can possibly have when they land on the invisible hand because that's what they're going to have to rely on for their uh, modifications for evading oh he's he's taken these shots wow those, those buzz droids are swarming all over him right now <laughs> That's the initiative five step done, I believe. So that's three shots into Obi-Wan. He's down to one health, one force. Damage engine and a hull breach. It's not great for him. Um, but Jag is going to see if he can 
do nothing with that <laughs> shot. Uh, and then the veteran, tar- veteran tail kind of just the one. You give you give these arcs a small target, and they don't do very well. If they have a big target, they do well. Um, but does take a hull off of three one one. He's wanted to keep hold of that. Calculate probably for these discord missiles, or just a regular shot actually. But there's the evade. Yeah, I suppose with the respawning, he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind really if they. Yeah. You know, he's just uh, at this stage. He just wants to put the damage on the Jedi, doesn't he? Take down Obi Wan while he's got no tokens. It is really tough. I've I've been very fortunate. He by right should probably have gone down with the amount of fire going into it. I think we've got this final shot. It doesn't have arc on Obi Wan, so it's going to have to go into Jag. And Jag now takes a crit, so that'll add to his stunned pilot. And the crit is fuel leak. Which at this point is not surprising. They have taken a lot of hits throughout this, but we are about to go into turn seven. That prototype has come back, so that hopefully should keep them out of the game just long enough for me to land on there but I've now got to try and actually get myself on there and, and, and stay the... on there yeah fortunately neither of them are stressed so that is going to help Ben does have initiative which oh it's a it's hard to say who I'd prefer to have initiative obviously it would be Dooku moving off but those those tri fighters have got an incredible dial and can really get in my way. Yeah, there's not much space to. No. <laughs> not much space to park. I mean, luckily the Etters have got a pretty incredible dial as well, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Is this another. No, it lands it. Thought we might have had another bump of those droids there. But Ben is just trying to set up the kill box just in case I do manage to land on there. Does purple take damage? He does. Again, Ben is just... He has done all the damage this game. I've, I've taken off shields on the invisible hand, but he is just... Pumping damage out everywhere. It's your systems phase. Yep, there's my systems phase. I completely <laughs> because I'm terrible. I am awful at this game, guys. I am just rubbish. Um, but I mentioned earlier, running tally at the moment, Ben has technically had 30 points on the board now with DFS 301 coming back and the prototype, who will come back on the overlay eventually, coming back. That actually puts him up to 30 points worth of ships he's had on the board. That must be pretty. Uh, <laughs> that must be pretty scary coming into this, just knowing your opponent's ships are just going to come back. Yeah, it does make it incredibly, let's say, interesting. Um, it, it gave me a bit of a tactical nightmare just knowing that the invisible hand regen shield, so I've got to be consistent with taking that down. The other ships will regenerate after the second turn. I can't bring my reinforcements in until the third turn, and they have to come in at the same time, so I can't even stagger them. It was just, there was a lot going on. It was like, right, how do I manage this? How do I actually get myself in a position where I can actually try for the try for the win? Um, but it is, it is doable. I mean, I've got the shields down on the invisible hand. I'm drip feeding the damage. Ben is helping me out loads there. That's <laughs> another damage going through. Um, oh, I'm excited to see. And Obi Wan. So he lands. Has he has landed. And I think he's got. It looks like he's only got. Oh no. A free ship shooting him. He's so he's got. One, two, 
three definite. I think both the tri fighters are out of arc. So I have done the rescue action. The only problem is I'm going to remember that there is actually a damaged engine on there. So the hard turns are actually red, so I wasn't actually able to perform that action. Oh no, okay. So, and then Anakin bumps. Oh, so that's unfortunate. He doesn't complete, he doesn't fully execute, so can't do the action himself. And takes the damage. So, I mean, oh dear. skidding into the landing bay of a capital ship is obviously not going to be great for your ship, especially when you uh, collide with your buddy. That's the Anakin in the uh, isn't the Naboo Starfighter. Yeah, just sliding. <laughs> in fact, I think we see Anakin. Most times Anakin is flying a ship, they end up sliding across the floor to a stop. The M1 Starfighter, the Eta 2 in Revenge of the Sith, and the front half of the Invisible Hand as well just slides across the uh, across Coruscant. So he doesn't have a great track record for <laughs> landing landing ships. This is, this is pod racer days. Yeah. I guess it's the just... trouble with... The Jedi now, they've landed on it, but you're going to have to carry on. You're going to have to fly off again, aren't you, and come back round? Yeah, that is going to be a tricky one. They are going to have to, obviously, depart the Invisible Hand and then come back round. But Anakin is going to see what he can do to that purple Bactoid. He's just choosing violence. Get rid of it if he can. Oh, that's good. Two hits on a crit. Had no shields, which means that that crit hopefully is going to be nice for me. Uh, blinded pilot. Oh, that's helpful. So that calculate is ignorable. Oddball looks like it doesn't have a shot, and it's at this point that I remember that Obi Wan has a damaged engine, so could not do that action so no chance to save the chancellor this turn but i do get to shoot a purple instead <laughs> so i mean there, there's upsides to it sure shooting's always good yeah especially, especially when you've got a range one like that but like i said maybe they've read the script for later and don't want to uh oh, especially when you Ooh. shoot like that at range one those evades aren't going to help you, I'm afraid, Ben. That's purple down, which is incredibly ideal because that's one less shot coming in at me, which most likely would have been a homing missile. So that's good to get rid of. If I can somehow keep Obi-Wan alive this round, I might, might be able to do it. It's going to be tough. I mean, every every round, I guess every round you don't do it, it's harder and harder, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, I, at the moment I've got, included this round, five rounds to do it, because we're on turn seven, and the game ends at 12 if I haven't managed it, and any ship I do manage to take out is just going to come back. That is two hits of the crit into... Jag. Do I spend that focus to try and see if I, I can, if I spend the focus, I'll survive. Yeah, I think you've got to oh, do what you no. can to stay on the board. Yeah, I had to spend it because of fuel leak. That would have absolutely ruined me. But it's now stun pilot, fuel leak, and blinded pilot. Fuel leak's obviously repaired itself, but. Good job I spent that focus, because uh, I wouldn't have been able to spend it other, any other time. Oh, that's oh dear. down. I really could have done with having his shots there to take out potentially 3-1-1. And also, I was thinking, actually, with the arcs, with the um, Born for Disability, actually, that'd be quite helpful for the Jedi, right? 
Uh, yes, I mean, unfortunately the Jedi don't get born for this. They have other abilities that work with ships that have born for this, but they don't have born for this, which is a shame because I think that would have been a bit broken because they would have been incredibly powerful. Ah. Uh. Because you would literally just fly them behind a wall of arcs that are focusing. Um, or vice versa, have the Jedi just focusing, but that's Obi Wan down. So suddenly, this Ouch. game has got a lot harder. Yeah, that Bactoy prototype is going to come back, so that makes it thirty-three points that Ben has had available to him. Um, yeah, it's it's got a lot harder. Anakin is going to have a really tough time. Um, he's got, he can do the, oh no, it's a two talent roll. I thought it was a one talent roll. He's got the two force talent roll. He, but I don't think that will keep him on. I think you could, oh, is this? The system barrel it, roll. Oh, I know. Are you going to do, are you going to do the two oh, force one. talent roll? Will that, will that keep you on the, a one or, or even a, two, a one hard? A one hard would land because you don't have to, you only have to fully execute the maneuver. You don't have to land the entire base on there. So even oh, if that only, changes things. Even if I, I only clip it. I was thinking you were going to have to turn around and come back in, but actually, if you can stay on there. Yeah. I, I was looking at it a second ago and just thinking Obi Wan, if he'd have survived, wouldn't have been able to do that because of where the Tri Fighter and Oddball were. So he wouldn't have been able to do that, even if he did like a did the boost and then the two talent. He would he would have been in a position to come back on turn nine, but not this turn. But I just need to hope that that lane stays clear for Anakin to land there, because three one one is in a nice position just to jump straight over Dooku and get right in the way there. Ooh. Oh, okay. I wonder if maybe he was expecting a K turn or something. Yeah, banking instead. Maybe expect me not to barrel roll away and forget my system phase once again. <laughs> but he's got some good guns on there. There's uh, both the Bactoids and. Um, the prototype have got an arc in on there. Dooku just turning away for a little bit. I'm okay with that. Bye bye Dooku, get out of there. Yeah. He's been there for too long. Big base ship with a barrel. I always forget that that ship has that. Just the thought of seeing that actually doing a barrel roll. It's, it, seeing that, like you say, large space ship to a barrel roll, it seems like, wow, that's crazy. But again, I know we are talking about version one earlier, but in version one, you would do the barrel roll with the template as if it was Normally. a small ship, wouldn't you? You, yeah. you oh, Can you it imagine doing big... that? That's crazy. I mean, just think, with the scimitar, it can cloak at the beginning of the game. So imagine it decloaking using the full two template. Wow. It would... Just the craziness of that. I mean, seeing a, seeing a Phantom or any other ship that has the cloaking device on it doing that is crazy in itself, like that extreme barrel roll. But on a large base ship, that would just be intimidating. But that is another ship killing itself on its friends. That's the prototype Tri Fighter down, uh, which is good. It wouldn't have been able to have a shot because it would fail its K, K turn. They're panicking. Yeah. But I mean, that kill box in there is scary. That's four ships that are going to have the chance to shoot at Anakin if he manages to land on there. And there's the one hard. Anakin land. He sticks the landing. He's only got one force. But he knows that he's basically got to try and do it. He's got stay no on. choice. Can he weather four shots? Oh, 
Oh, I'm actually an Anakin disabled, weapons disabled, so cannot shoot. See, warming up those green dice. Yeah. <laughs> putting all of the force I can into those green dice to try and survive it. That's a good start. Just one. Ooh. You may as well spend the force. You can only change one, so spend it while you need to. So, no force. This is now down to pure dice rolling. But if I can borrow Qui-Gon's dice from the Phantom Menace, that'd be great. That's a nice shot into... Prototype. Um, can I borrow those green dice in a minute, Ben? They look like they could be <laughs> handy. Um, a crit onto purple is a direct hit. I think I would prefer weapons failure. So, going down to the I was just doing three or one. Scores of damage on Oddball. Just teasing us now for the rest of the game. So, Toyd and Prototype have missiles. Back Toyd has homing missiles. Oh. I feel. I feel like if Anakin lives, he has to he has to succeed just on like that principle. Yeah. So we have a homing missile to come. What is what of the other battles doesn't have a lock, so can't do can't we won't have double homing missiles, thankfully. But then there's also the ion missile as well. Oh, oh this is just wrong. It's just not fair. So much to take. <laughs> Debating what's oh, making him roll it as well. Two, come on, blank out of the rerolls. That's not a blank out. Then. Oh, and that is Anakin dead. Oh, just doing everything I could. I mean, it, it was a great game, tough, but great game. And just that accuracy, I would not have saved the Chancellor there because that was three focuses. <laughs> so I'd have had to come back in and do it all over again anyway. Um, but I tell you what, that was so much fun to play. And if you get a chance to play this scenario, I 100% recommend doing it. It's, it is good fun. It, it it did look fun. And especially towards the end, it, you know, like you know, like in standard play, you get to the last round and you like trying to work out your win conditions. It, it felt like that with the last few rounds. It was like, where you know, where where can you land on it and how are you going to put it off? But can can I do it? And I'm I managed to land on there. I mean, I'm happy that I managed to land on there and took it to turn eight. So really good fun there. Uh, but well done to Ben. Uh, Separatist victory. So the saga is rewritten from this point. But um. Andy, thank you so much for joining us for that. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it was good to uh, see a, a non-standard game. And guys, Siege of Coruscant is done. The saga is rewritten. We will have more content coming out soon. Let us know in the comments if there's anything you do want to see again. But again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.